sing the doxology. Praise God. From whom?
some appreciation for all that you've been to us throughout this week. And Lord and Heavenly Father, we come thanking you right now, dear Lord, for laying us down in our bed last night. Watching over us all night long. And Lord, I thank you for not letting that old bed be laying on without the morning board. And dear Lord, the covers that we covered our bodies with, dear Lord, was not our mind in Jesus. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning for giving us all another opportunity to have life and having life more abundantly. Lord, you paid the price, you paid the ultimate price that we all may have the right to the tree of life. And dear Lord, we come to say thank you this morning. There's not anything that we can do, dear Lord, but just to worship and praise and magnify your holy and righteous name. Because, Heavenly Father, there's nothing else we can do but just lift you up this morning. When the word says, I'll be lifted up, when the word is, I draw all men unto me. Dear Lord, we come to lift you. We come to magnify you. We come to glorify you. We come to edify you. We go to magnify you. Lord, we have been so 
that give your name to honor and praise. We worship you and we honor you and we rush you into this house this morning. We ask that we know you're already here, but dear Lord, we ask you to move about this building. Move about from heart to heart and mind to mind, dear Lord, that we are coming here, dear Lord, to give you the praise and worship your holy name, dear Lord, that you are so deserving. Move in this building. Dear Lord, when it's all over, when it's all over, we can't even say another prayer. We can't even sing another hymn. We can't even use the old voices of our vows. But Lord, give us that sweet rest in grace. Where old man Job declared that the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Give us that sweet rest in grace. Over on the other side of the Jordan. Yeah. Over there where every day will be Sunday. Yeah. Every day will be like a month of May. Yeah. There should be no crying over there. No dying over there. Yeah. All the former things have passed away. Dear Lord, over there where the streets are paved with gold. And there will be no more hiding, hiding to a good Bible. Every day will be Sunday. Dear Lord, that sweet resting place that we are all working towards. Lord, Heavenly Father, prepare that sweet resting place for your prepared. We give your name, the honor, and praise, and the glory. Would you so deserve it of this morning? Come on into this house. Bless thee, your people. Guide us and keep us as only you can. In the master's name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. We give you praise. We give you honor. We glorify you. We magnify you. We edify you. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all you're doing. It. Thank you for all you've done already. In the master's name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. And every heart we say, Amen. Lord, should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of that 
salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. 45. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. The word of God for the people of God.
verse 6 and 7. So it was. While they were there, the days were complete for her to be delivered. Let's read this together. Sister Weston, you have it. That's what's just like in this morning. You're out right on time, Sister Weston. They say, go ahead with your bad so you're, you're right on time. All right, let's, let's read it together. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in his father's law, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. For a subject this morning, let him in. Let him in. I was sitting here reflecting on the topic as well as the sermon itself. And I began to think about some of the people we have funeralized over the past few years. Those who had a relationship with Jesus. And I asked myself, what would they say to us this morning? Haven't walked the streets of gold. Amen. Haven't seen the pearly gates. Amen. Haven't witnessed the river that flows like crystals, just crystal clear. Amen. Haven't seen the tree of life. What would they say to us this morning? Amen. Haven't seen Jesus. And his glory. What would they say to us this morning? And I believe they would say to us this morning, let me. Let him in. Let him in. And if my calculations are correct, in six days we're going to celebrate. The birth of Jesus, who rose from the dead after three days, that one day you and I could rise from the sting of death and be victorious over the grave. Let, let him in. Why? Because Jesus is the reason for the season. I'll say it again, if you didn't know it this morning, Jesus, not the wall. Jesus, not Amazon, Jesus, not the bicycles, Jesus is the reason for, for the season. But somehow, between his birth and this very hour, Right, Black Fridays have overshadowed the one who was born that we could be born again. Let him in. Somehow the gifts under the tree has overshadowed the one who hung on the tree. That we could have the gifts of eternal life. And all I can say to you to do this morning is let, let him in. According to Mr. Webster, to let someone in is to allow them to enter a place. And the place Jesus desires to enter this morning is your heart. Let him in. But I am mindful that he would only stand at the door and knock. He would not force his way into your life. But if you let him in, he will come in to dine with you and you with him. But you must first, what? Let him in. And I'm sure some of you all are thinking about dining on Christmas right now. I'm not calling your name, Sister Pooh. <laughs> but I'm sure Amen. that we're thinking about.
about dining on Christmas right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be good. Oh, yeah. But if you dine with Jesus, oh, I promise you long after Christmas is over, oh, yeah. you will still have leftovers. Oh, yeah. If you dine with Jesus, I promise you long after Christmas is over, you can still taste oh, yeah. and see that the Lord is good. potato pies are good. But Jesus is better. Hallelujah. Yes, the cornbread stuffing is good. But Jesus is better. Yes, the cake is sweet, but Jesus is even sweeter. Let me in this morning. He is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. We're not told when Luke let Jesus in according to our text. But we know based upon the evidence of his life and what he's recording in the gospel this morning that he did it, let him in. See, your life should tell somebody that you have let Jesus in. See, I can't tell you to let him in if I haven't let him in myself. So Luke's life is a reflection that he let Jesus into his life. His only goal is to give an orderly example, a documentation of the life of Jesus. And so I must ask you a question this morning. Could you give someone an orderly account of the life of Jesus? Don't raise your hand. That's between you and the Lord. But if you let him in, he will bring to remembrance all that he has taught you. He will give you what you need to give others what they need to let him in. And on this fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of love, every child of God, that's you and I, should be able to tell somebody that God so loved the world that he what? That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Please note, God gave his son before we even ask. He gave him. That's what we celebrate on Christmas Day. God giving his son to die for our sins. He gave him before we could even ask. And all he says to us this morning, I have given you my son. Let him in. First point this morning, God is still in control. It may appear that the Congress of the Senate is in control. It may appear that the mayor is in control. It may appear that those in the White House are in control, but I stop by to tell you this morning that God is still in control. Verse 1 of the text read, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the entire world should be registered. And based upon those scriptures, it appeared that God was not in control. Yeah, but God is still in control. You see, by ordering everyone to be registered in their hometown, he was, Augustus that is, he was disrupting Mary and Joseph's plan to have Jesus in Nazareth. But God is still in control. 
Sometimes his, his, his disruption or, of your life is for the deliverance of somebody else. See, God was disrupting the life of Mary and Joseph for the deliverance of you and I. God is still in control. And sometimes his annoyance is for somebody else's anointing. Sometimes his aggravation is for somebody else's revelation. God is still in control. See, the, the government thought they were doing what they needed to do as it relates to taxing folk. But God needed to get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Amen. And so to the naked eye, to Mary and Joseph, it may appear that God was not in control. Amen. And sometimes as Christians, it appears the same way to us. Amen. God, you told me it was going to happen this way. I've done all that you've told me to do, and here I am moving again. God is still in control. You see, you can't give birth to God's promises in the wrong place. Don't miss that. See, God had promised in the book of Micah that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And no matter how comfortable Mary and Joseph got in Nazareth, that wasn't the place to bring forth God's promises. You cannot give birth to God's promises in the wrong place. Sometimes he has to uproot you to put you where he needs you to be to be a blessing to somebody else. If you will, just want to reflect upon some of the times Brother Hague is in the military. Brother Weston in the military. Think of some of the times in the colleges and the communities and places you live. Say, God, why are you disrupting me? I'm comfortable where I am. Amen. Only to find out you were a blessing to where God was taking you to. That's the kind of God we serve. Man is not in control. God is in control. See, what Mary had in her was of the Holy Spirit. And what you have in you is of the Holy Spirit. And you can only give birth to what God has placed in you in the right place. And so it appeared that they were just moving to be moving. But God had a plan. God had a plan. And all I can say this morning is what? Let him in. You see, there was already a reveal party. Yes, Jesus had a reveal party. Yes, he did. He had a reveal party. And later on, he's going to have a baby shower. But right now, he had a reveal party. Matthew 1 and 21 says this. It says, and she, this, this is the angels talking to Joseph. Here's the reveal party. And she shall bring forth a son. That's the reveal party. I, I can see the blue all over the place. This is the reveal party for Jesus. She shall bring forth a son. And at the reveal party, they even named him. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're not going to even wait for a name. We're going to name him right now. You shall call his name what? Jesus. That wonderful child. Why? Because it says you should call his name Jesus. Here, here we go. For he will save his people from their sins. He will save the folks of New Mount Moriah from their sins. He didn't come to save himself. He was God, but he came to what? Save us. He will save people, his people, from their sins. Who are Jesus' people? Those who put their faith in him. That's who Jesus' people are. The ones who put their faith in him. God will use the government or whatever he needs.
needs to use to get you where he needs you to be. Let him in. Our second point of the text is this. If they knew what I knew. Hallelujah. If the people walking around in this city, Jacksonville, in darkness, if they knew what we knew, hallelujah, they'll run to the church. Because in the church there is a Savior. If they knew what we knew. Verse 7c reads, and laid him in a manger. Why? Because there was no room for them. Where? In the end. Let him in. Is there room in your heart for Jesus this morning? Let him in. But I find it hard to believe that there was room for everybody else in the end except Jesus and his mother. But don't speak too, don't shout too early. There was a time in our life when we had room for everybody else except Jesus. Don't just put it on the engine. Put it on yourself every once in a while. There was a time in our life we had room for everyone else except Jesus. But mama kept praying. Daddy kept praying. The preacher kept praying. Auntie Bill kept praying. And one day you let him in. I find it hard this morning that there was room for everyone else except Jesus. If they knew what I now know, if they knew what I know, they would have what? Let him in. If they knew he was coming to preach the gospel to the poor. He was bringing good news to those that were spiritually poor. If they would have known that, I believe they would have let him in. If they would have known he was coming to heal the brokenhearted. If you ever had a heart broken in Jesus, heal your broken heart. I believe they would what? Let him in. I believe this morning. If they knew he was coming to proclaim liberty to the captive, they would have let him in. What have you been in captive to? What have you been in captive to? But because you let Jesus in, he what set the captives free. I believe they would know what I knew, but I know now they would have let him in. I believe if they would have known he came to bring to so so that the so that the blind could receive their sight. They would have let him in. I was blind, but now I see. We've all been spiritually blind. But because we let Jesus in, now we see. Have mercy, Lord God. If they would have known, he would set at liberty those who are oppressed. Mm -hmm. I believe this morning they would have let him in. Mary, I believe if they would have known that Mary and Joseph had traveled 70 miles from Nazareth to Jerusalem. I'm from Nazareth to Bethlehem, mm -hmm. to Bethlehem, 70 miles pregnant. Mm -hmm. If they had known her condition, mm -hmm. I believe they would have let her in. Mm -hmm. I believe this morning they would have known that Jesus, the bread of life, mm -hmm. needed to be in Bethlehem, the city of bread. They would have let him in. Jesus said, I am the bread that came yeah. down from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I am the bread of life. Oh, no. Bethlehem to me, what? House of bread. Yeah. But Jesus, the whole loaf. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 
son, you may have a couple of slices, but Jesus is what? He's the whole loaf. Yes. Have mercy, Lord God, on us this morning. If they were known those things, I believe they would have let Jesus in. Yes. What are you saying this morning, Pastor? I'm saying my third point is this. I couldn't keep it to myself. If you know who Jesus is, why are you keeping it to yourself? If you know he's a bridge over troubled water, why are you keeping it to yourself? If you know he came to set the captives free, why are you keeping it to yourself? I'm just saying this one. I'm just talking to me this one. I'm just, I'm just talking to me. But there were shepherds out in the field. The night was dark. But God is light to him. There is no darkness. The shepherds were the least of folks that should appear to because they were considered as being non-religious. They didn't go to church enough. You know how we get in folks that go to church enough. God has no respect for person. So he found the people downtown by the bus stop. The one that we neglect. The one that we pass by. The one that we look down upon and say, glory in the highest. Hallelujah. And on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. There's a child being born, I'm paraphrasing, as a child being born, or has been born, and you will find him in, an, in, in a manger. Yes. I can hear the shepherd saying, I thought I wouldn't tell nobody, but I couldn't. I couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell somebody about Jesus. They saw the glory of God shining all around them. They heard the message about Jesus. They saw him with their own eyes. And they could not keep it to themselves. It's time the church do what God has called us to do and tell the dying world that Jesus, our Savior, has been born. Say they came and found, and they came, listen to this, verse 16, and they came with haste. They didn't waste any time. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Verse 17 says, and when they had seen him, hallelujah, they made widely known, they couldn't keep it to themselves made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Amen. Have you told a dying world what has been said about this child named Jesus? Amen. The one the angels saying, glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Have you told anybody about Jesus this morning? Have you told him he has come to save us from our sins? Let him in this morning. Amen. Have you told him that he's come to bring peace between us and God? Let him in this morning. Amen. Have you told him there is no joy without Jesus? Let him in this morning. Amen. He come to bring what? Peace on earth. Amen. So why did the earth need peace? Why did the earth need peace? Because there was a war between man, woman, and God. There was a war, a spiritual war. We were separated by God from God because of our sins. And Jesus came to say, I bring peace, I bring reconciliation, I bring you back to my Father. I am the bridge of peace to unite you with my Father. And that is the message this 
morning on the birth of Jesus. He came to save us from our sins. It's okay to have gifts. But do not forget about the gift of eternal life that Jesus only can give us. It's okay to have dinner. But don't forget to taste and see that the Lord is good. It's okay to have new clothes, but don't forget about your white robe that God has waiting for you in heaven. It's all right to bake pies, but someone said, he's sweet, I know. He is sweet, I know. I found the Savior in what? He's sweet, I know. So what is the conclusion of this matter, Reverend? The conclusion is to let, let him in. If you're watching this morning, let him in. If you're here this morning, let him in. And I know you are, we have a congregation of theologians here, so I'm going to put it this way for us that are saved. There are some parts of our life that we are still locking Jesus out. There are some parts of our life. You can go in this room, Jesus. You can go in that room, Jesus. You can go in this room, Jesus. But do not go in that room. Let him in. Not in some of the house, but in all of your house. Let him in every aspect of your life. He is your Savior. He is your king. He is your peace. He is your joy. He is all that God intended him to be as relates to humanity. He is God, and besides him, there is none other. Let him in.
Savior right now into my heart. And your word says that I shall be saved. And we thank you, oh God, for sending us Jesus. I let him in to my heart. In Jesus' name, we pray. I pray that someone in this time has accepted Jesus. Amen.
holy and righteous God. King of kings and Lord of lords. God of power and strength, a God of mercy and grace. A God that heals. A God that raises up. Lord, we come right now in the name of Jesus. A name that is above all names. We come in the name of Jesus. Asking the hands of healing. The hands of strength. The hands of mercy and grace. We rest upon us as a right now, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, your word declares we have not because we ask. We ask it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name will bring healing to her body. Praise her and lift the thanksgiving to her heart. We bless your name right now, God. We, we magnify you. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in this season of expectation, we're expecting a miracle. We're expecting healing. We're expecting strength. We're expecting praise. We're expecting you to show up, God, and bring strength to her body. Oh, Lord, we claim it right now in the name of Jesus. You are her savior. You are her salvation. You are her healer. Heal God as only you can. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify your name. In the name of Jesus. A name above all names. Amen. 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 God's name be praised. Give God some glory this morning.
Amen. 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 Um, just an announcement. Um, we're still collecting socks and t-shirts for the homeless. Uh, that ends December 31st. Uh, if you can't get to the church and you want to donate, let me know. Um, I will come to you and pick them up. Um, as well as the Christmas program will be going on uh, next Sunday um, at night, uh, 10 a.m. during uh, Bible Discovery Hour. I almost said church meeting. <laughs> um, so please uh, join and come out and support our youth. They worked really hard on this program. And I am really excited to just see so many of our young people back in the church. Thank you, Sister Marvel. Let's be mindful of your announcements. And she, along with other parents, have worked very hard to ensure that we have a great celebration for our Christmas program. So we thank God for your work and may God continue to bless you. Thank you for your support. That was on yesterday evening. We had the Christmas caroling, the WMS, and YP Deers. And they even threw me up there for some reason, but thank God. <laughs> <laughs> thank God for the Burke having the back. So thank we uh, thank God for a wonderful, wonderful time. Amen. I'm, I'm in that draw of the noise category, but I thank God for the noise this morning. Amen. Thank God for the noise. Amen. There was a WMS giveaway. We have a picture right there. On yesterday evening, they uh, gave food to the community for those that need that we need for in the church as well as out of the church. We Amen. thank God for them. But that is only possible through your giving. Amen. Thank God for your giving that we can meet the needs of those in our community. Uh, we're going to share a watch night service with Bethel Tyler Street on the 31st at 6.30. Uh, we will have all restrictions in place. We just want to fellowship safely. Uh, I volunteered Reverend Burke to be a worship leader. She didn't know, but I volunteered her. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you may uh, come out and support that, we want to ensure that we still celebrate our Lord. It may be a new year, but we still serve the same God. Amen. Amen. Uh, join us at Bible studies on Tuesday nights. Reverend Burke is teaching this month and weekly prayer on Wednesday, weekly prayer on Wednesdays at seven. Uh, one of our members uh, recently committed to the Naval Academy. Wow. Amen. Wow. Christopher Calhoun.
and 